This video is going to show you the process of defungusing CRT tubes. This photo shows you CRT fungus. It's a crystallization of the glycol coolant in front of CRT projector tubes. The first thing is to get a coffee filter ready so you can filter the old coolant and reuse it. If you don't reuse the old coolant, you'll have to find a way to dye the new glycol in order to keep the color proper. I have some new glycol that I bought at an electronic surplus store. And what I'm going to do is first wet the coffee filter with new clean glycol. Uh, this will reduce the amount of colored coolant that I lose to the filter and it will also bulk up the original volume so that when I refill the tube I'll have a little left over. Speeding things up, you remove the two screws at the top of the coolant chamber and the rubber gaskets, making sure you note what way is up on the rubber gasket and begin draining the chamber using a long syringe. If you're draining more than one tube, make sure to rinse out the syringe with clean glycol to prevent the mixing of the two colored dyes. After about five minutes, I have the tube almost completely empty. And to get the last little bit of glycol out, I use the syringe to force air through one hole, allowing it to slowly drip out of the other and into the coffee filter. Once the tube is empty, you can seal up your container of glycol and get ready to start cutting away the silicone that holds the glass to the face of the tube. To cut the silicone you have to use a brand new razor blade. If you use a dull razor blade it'll take a lot longer and you'll probably end up scratching the paint on the metal ring on the front of the tube. It'll take about five to ten minutes to get all the way around the tube. Just start from one corner and start cutting so that you can see the tip of the blade on the inside of the chamber. Once you've got all the way around, there might be one spot that you can't get access to with the knife. Uh, when you get to this spot, you can peel the tube back and the silicone will peel off of the metal or all the glass. The popping noise up next is the silicone pulling off of the metal ring at the end of the tube. After you have the glass removed from the front of the tube, you can get ready to cut the silicone off the glass and off the metal face of the tube. You'll have to use another fresh razor blade to do this. If you use a dull blade, you'll leave lots of silicone stuck to the glass and it'll take you a lot longer to get it clean. To get the silicone off the glass, the best way is to press the razor blade as flush as you can against the glass and then peel back the silicone with the other hand. If you do this properly, there will be almost no residue on the glass. After you get the majority of the silicone off the front of the glass, 
you can start peeling it away from the edges. The more you can peel off the glass, the better a seal you'll get when you reassemble the tube later. Peeling the silicone off the metal face of the tube is about the same process. Try and keep the blade as flush as you can against the metal. This will stop you from peeling the paint and it will also make sure that you get as much silicone off as physically possible with the least amount of work. Once you have the silicone peeled off of the glass and the tube, you can clean them both with CLR. This will remove the glycol crystals. When resealing the tubes, I used a high temperature RTV silicone from the automotive department. This is normally used for making gaskets and engines. When you reapply the glass, remove one of the screws from the metal housing. This will stop air pressure from building up and ruining the seal. Also try to stand the tube on end so that the glass doesn't slip around. After I held it in place for a few minutes, I hung the tubes by wire so that the glass wouldn't move while the silicone was curing. Let the silicone cure for as long as it says on the packaging and then refill your tubes. This is fairly simple. Just remove both of the plugs on the top and use a syringe to put the coolant back in. When the tube is almost full, make sure that you leave an air bubble at the top of the chamber. If you don't, pressure will build up inside and it could break your silicone seal or crack the glass, damaging the tube and ruining your projector. Reinstalling the tube is fairly simple. In the case of my Sony projector, it's four small connectors, the CRT connector at the back of the tube, and the high voltage supply lead which clicks into the high voltage splitter block. If you are careful when you did the cleaning of your tubes, you probably won't have to do any major adjustments when you set your projector back up again. The total time for this project was about two days. That includes the time it took for the silicone to cure. It only took about three hours of active participation to disassemble, clean and reassemble the projector.